standing in this ruin of a room and in fact the answer is we're having a new kitchen done and we've had all the cabinets and all the appliances ripped out and so it's really empty you can probably hear it from my voice and this melodeon sounds amazing in here and on Monday we're having our new kitchen uh, fitted we're going to start fitting it so I've only got today uh, to use this room to record this lesson I wasn't going to waste these fantastic acoustics so please excuse the mess that you can see behind me uh, hopefully this time next week um, it's all going to look amazing and I'll perhaps show you what it looks like then tea is needed you can never have too much tea when you're doing a melodian lesson so what have I got for you today? Well, I've got a new Melodeon. Uh, this is not brand new, but it is new to me. And it's an HA114C. Uh, it's a Hona Melodeon. And it's got these four stops. That you can see on the top here. Go down. And they're off when they're down. And they're on when they're up. It's a one row Melodeon in the key of C major. So I've, I've had a one row uh, box before in C but not like this and on the left hand side I've got these rather wonderful spoon bases okay which you play with your uh, little finger and your first finger like that and at the back there is another spoon here which is the air button this thing's an absolute beast when I first got it it needed a bit of fettling which means in the melodeon world it needed a bit of tuning a bit of sorting out as usual, I turn to my trusty fettler, Martin White, who lives about 10 miles away from me, which is fantastically handy. He had it for a few weeks and returned it to me, and it sounds, as you would imagine, amazing. Let me just talk a little bit about uh, how this thing is constructed and what it actually does. Now, my old two-row melodeon was just a kind of one sound. It was two reeds per button, tuned a little bit apart, so reasonably wet as we say in the melodeon world and uh, it was great but it only had kind of one sound the left hand was more versatile because it had uh, three chords a c f g kind of a three chord trick in the key of c this one's only got two chords only c and g so it's a little bit more uh, limited in that way uh, but it's still good so what do all these buttons do here well for a start for each note whether on the push or the pull has a possible four components uh, the reed nearest to me gives me a low uh, sound a low reed so you've got like that okay uh, and then you've got uh, the two reeds in the middle, which are both medium reeds, so an octave higher than that. That's the kind of meat and potatoes of the sound. You've got one reed tuned slightly flat, a concert pitch, one tuned uh, sharp, uh, which is dedic tuning. You hear that beating. Actually, uh, having said that, I'm not sure there is dedic tuning on this. It may be anyway. You can hear that they're slightly tuned apart one that sharps with the other and then the one nearest the front furthest away from me is the uh, high reed so that's giving me a kind of a concertina sound so I could have um, the high reed and the two medium reeds uh, like this hopefully you can hear that high reed as well as the medium reeds and of course the most powerful setting is all uh, four stops up and you've got the incredibly powerful sound and that's the sound that I use and I think most people with these instruments tend to do that um, the preferred key of these amongst the melodeon world I think is D, D major so uh, a tone higher than this but you know I like C major it's fine uh, this one cropped up for sale during the lockdown yeah as I say it needed a bit of work but it's great now Let's have a listen to the basses. Now, like I say, on the push, you've got... Um, you can hear that. Immensely powerful bass. 
bass, that's the C bass and the C chord. So the little finger's playing the C bass. You can see you, you put your finger on the end of the spoon, okay, and push in, and you put your first finger on the end of the other spoon, that gives you the C major chord. And then when you pull out, you've got G major. So. C major and G major. It makes a really good noise, doesn't it? The back, like I say, is the uh, air button. And I won't go into that because if you're a melodeon player, you'll know what that is. Uh, it lets air in and out of the instrument. And uh, that too, as I say, is a spoon. And Martin's put these rather nice red pieces of felt to cushion the blow so it's not clacky. When I got this, as is often the case with these instruments, these right hand buttons were disappearing uh, down the hole and making my fingers pretty sore. Martin has done what's known as limiting the action. Um, I'm not sure how it's done. I think it's a, um, a mixture of wood and felt. Anyway, it's, it's raised the, the, uh, the action so that when you press the button, it, it goes down obviously, but it doesn't go right down below the, the level of the keyboard. And that's what hurts your fingers. Well, if you've got slender fingers like mine, certainly it does. I mean, there is a certain amount of clacking, but that's part of the, the joy of the instrument, as it were. When I went to pick this instrument up, uh, Martin said, you really want to learn this tune? And he played me a tune called, Oh Joe, the boat is going over. And I really liked it. And so I've been working on this tune and I'm going to teach you how to play it this morning. Now you can play this on an instrument like this. Okay, if you've got a D version of this, of course, it won't sound the same, but it'll be the same buttons. It'll just sound a tone higher. You can play this on the instrument I used to have, the 1040C. Just play the, uh, will probably be the top two buttons, the C and the G, ignore the F. So it's the same as mine. And if you've got a G, C melodeon, a two row melodeon in the keys of G and C, just play the C row and just play the C uh, C and G basses, so you know it's a pretty versatile tune. This you can play it on those instruments. I'm going to play it with all four stops open because I really like the sound. And let's make a start. So it says there the title and the uh, instrument we're playing it on and the key. You can see we've got quite a few repeats in this. Uh, bars one to four are the same as nine to twelve. Seventeen is the same as eighteen, twenty-five, and twenty-six. 21 is the same as 22, 17 to 20, same as 25 to 28, uh, 13 is the same as 29, 15 is the same as 31. So lots of repeats, says so you're having to relearn those bars. We're going to start with the A part. Uh, you can see that it says pause plus one. Okay, on this instrument, this is a third button start. So third button down on the push. <laughs> Uh, that's the note of C. So if I put my fingers down in that position, buttons three, four, five, six, fingers one, two, three, four, that is what I call pause H, the home position, when my first finger is on the home note. I'm going to come down one from that. So that is what I call pause plus one, and that's where I'm going to start. So my first finger is on this note of E on the push, and it says up one on repeat. Well, this isn't the repeat, so we'll ignore that for the time being and just play this first bar. You can see it's a two, four time signature, so two beats to the bar. So you've got a dotted crotchet and a quaver. So you count that one and two and. Now, the note E is on the push, and if you just play the same button and pull out, you get the next note, which is F. And you'll notice this dagger because that is my sign for saying, don't bother repressing the note, just hold on to the button and pull out and that will give you your next note. So you've got E on the push and then F on the pull. It's actually pretty hard to show both hands at once on this instrument because they're so set back. So I have to try and remember to keep angling myself. So there's your first bar as far as the right hand is concerned. Finger one, finger one, one and two and, like that. And I've only pressed the button once. Let's talk about the left hand. Now you can't really go wrong with the, the bass for this because you've only got uh, two chords. And you'll see that it says capital letter C, 
small letter C, capital letter C, small letter G. So the capital letter C is the C bass, that one there, okay? Small letter C is C chord. So you've got C bass, C chord, C bass, in your typical um, pa, um, and the final part is a G chord, that small letter G means G chord, so it's the top spoon pulled out. So it's push, 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 pull. So, that's your first bar. And have your hand, I'm going to show you this, have your, the back of your hand, kind of this part of your hand, ready to squeeze against that, that rear spoon for the air button, which you are going to need to operate a few times. I would think when you start this tune, just pull the bellows out, something like that, because you've got quite a lot on the push to start with. Let's just play that for you again. Show you the right hand. And by the way, the bellows are held in by these little straps. There's one there, there's one on the back. A little tip I found is just, just to squeeze the two sides together and that means that it's very easy to pop that strap off and then have it dangling down there out of the way. That just keep the bellows closed when you're not playing the instrument. Bellows are really nice. I think Martin said this is unusual because it's got 17 fold bellows which I think he said is fairly unusual. So yeah, it's, it's really nice isn't it? It's a pretty thing to have, it's just a nice thing to own, apart from being able to play it. It's a different uh, kind of playing technique to the normal two row melodians that I generally play. But it's been a lot of fun learning this tune. So we've got a first bar. Now the next bar, bar two, we're working our way down the keyboard, down the fingerboard, and we go to the next button down, finger two, pushing and then pulling. So it's the same thing as you did in the first bar, but with finger two. That gives you G, A. One and two and. And again, you see there, you don't have to repress the button, you just hang on to the button. And again, the bass is C bass C chord, C bass G chord. So that bar. Right, let's play those two bars. To a pretty good start. Now you can see bar number three is different, it's got four quavers so it's counted one and two and and it's push push pull push. Now G E D C, they're the notes we are playing. So G on the push, finger two, E on the push, finger four, so that's uh, two buttons below that. Same button pulled out, hence the dagger. This is D, and then button above on the push, we come back to a C. G, E, D, C. One and two and, and this time the bass is different. It's C bass, C chord, G bass, C chord. So you pull out for the G bass, and then return to pushing for the C chord. Remember, capital letter is the bass, little letter is the chord. Now, bar four is all on the pull, and it's, for the first time, two crotches. It's a B and an A. Finger three, finger two, in this position we are in, which is pos plus one and it's G bass, G chord throughout. So the whole thing, like I say, on the pull. Okay, let's recap, reset, and play the first four bars. Okay, and that's pretty good. Let's scroll down and do the next couple of Bars. Now this is bars five and six, and we've got to change position. It says pause H, okay. It says up one, okay. So you were here to start with. Now you're going to move up one, come up here, and your first finger is going to go on button three because you're in pause 
H, the home position, but you're pulling to get the note D. And again, it's a dotty crotchet quaver. And we have this. We have a D on the pull, then we go to the button below and push to get the E. The bass line is G bass, G chord, G bass, C chord. So it's pull, 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 like that. Put that together. Now, the next bar, bar six, we are going to play the same button that we just played, but we're going to pull to get the note F. And then we're going to go to the button below and push to get G. And again, it's a dotted crotchet quaver, so it's one and two and pull, push. Notice this F has got a dagger below it because you can hang on to the button from the previous uh, bar. And the bass line, same as it was in the bar five, the bar prior to this. So G bass, G chord, G bass, C chord. So that bar sounds like this. Just show you that with the bass a bit clearer. Those two bars. Now what you couldn't see out of shot there was I was squeezing that air button in on those two push notes. Otherwise, I'm going to get a bit of an armful of bellows, as I often call it, where the bellows come out too far. So squeezing the air button in, and just to remind you, when you operate the air button, make sure you push or you pull, whichever way you're going, a little bit harder, so you don't lose too much volume, or any volume, hopefully. Right, so that's the first six bars. Should we try and play those? Can we get all those in one shot? Yes, we can. So, first six bars, here we go. Sounds great, isn't it? It's such a powerful sound, isn't it? It's funny, isn't it, how when I was much younger, I really didn't like the sound of accordions and I was, could never imagine a time that I'd be so into them, but that's what this thing is. I mean, I call it a melodion, but in other countries, this is known as an accordion, uh, a diatonic accordion, because it gives you only notes in the, uh, the scale that you're in, only C major notes we find, so only C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. There's no, on this instrument, there are no accidentals. When we come down, we only have notes in the scale, so no accidentals at all. Now we're up to bar number seven. That's our right hand. Looks a bit complicated, but actually it's pretty, pretty easy. We have three notes on the pull. We have an A, remember we're in position home. We have an A finger three, a B finger four, and then an A again finger three. Notice you have a quaver and two semi-quavers. So you count that one ender. So one kind of medium note, two short notes. And then the same button, you just push in, dagger note, to get the G, and then come to the button above, pull out, finger two, to get the F. So you count that one and a two and. Like that. The bass line for that is G bass, G chord on the pull, C bass on the push, G chord on the pull. It sounds like this. And then we're up to bar number eight. And this is E and then F. In fact, bar number eight is actually the same as bar number one, isn't it? Okay, not the same fingers, but musically it's the same. It's the dotted crotchet E and a quaver F with C bass C chord, C bass G chord. Right, now I'm not going to try and squeeze that up on the computer to read those eight bars. I'm going to use my sheet music, which I've got slightly out of shot here. And I suggest that you look at your printed music. Hopefully you've printed your music out. There are four pages. But my music's pretty big because my eyesight's not great. So I tend to have only two bars per stave. But it makes it really easy to read. So here's the first eight bars. <laughs> Now, 
Next bit, bars 9 to 12 are the same as 1 to 4, so we'll just rattle those off. Okay, here we go. Back into a position plus 1, and it's down 1, and it says SBDF because you've just gone. You've ended on this note F, which is uh, button 4 on the pull, finger 2. Now you're going to play the same button but with finger 1 and on the push. So it's same button, different finger. SBDF is my code for that. I love my codes, don't I? And first finger, and we're moving down one into position plus one to do this repeat of an earlier section. So let's do 9, 10, 11, and 12, same as 1 to 4. Here we go. Okay, and now we're up to bar 13. Now from pause plus one, we're going to pause plus two. So we're moving down one position. We've got two crotchets. Now it's the same button, but because it's so slow, I don't use that dagger technique, I repress. So I pull for the D, push for the E, as I play G bass on the pull, and C bass on the push. Like that. Now, the next bar, bar 14, is all on the pull. The right hand all in position, finger four, finger three, finger two, finger one. This is pause plus two, so two down from the home position. One and two and four quavers. F, D, B, A. Four, three, two, one, and G bass. G chord throughout. Now, in bar 15, it's the same button as you just played, but pushed in to get the G, which you play twice. Then pull out to get the A. Keep pulling, but below gives you B. And it's... You could go... You could use a dagger technique. There, I think it's nicer to actually repress the button. And it's C bass, G bass. It's simple, isn't it? When you're pushing, it's C bass. When you're pulling, it's G bass. There are no other basses. Okay? Kind of the choices are taken out of the uh, equation for you, so you don't have to worry about it. And then bar 16, the end of the A part. All on the push. And it's dotted crotchet C, finger 2, 1 and 2 and. And on that final and count, Go to the button above, still pushing finger one to get the G. And it's C bass, C chord, C bass, C chord. So let's just play those last four bars. Okay, let's play the whole of the A part now, shall we? One and two and. C bass throughout, everything's on the push, counted one and two, the one and two, and uh, because you've got this two quavers, nice and even, then you've got long note, short note, dotted, quaver, semi quaver, very, very simple, and you get to use fingers one, two, and three on this. Let's go to bar 19 now. Push, push, pull, push. That's C and E on the push. Fingers three and four. And then same button pulled out will give you D. Button above on the push will give you C. Uh, and that's C bass C chord, G bass C chord. Okay, so the whole thing. Bar number 20, all on the pull. B, 
A crotchet, crotchet, all G bass. Now coming up, you've got probably the hardest of the uh, the bars in the piece. Again, it's like bar 17 and 18. You've got uh, two quavers, dotted quaver, semi-quaver, but the final semi-quaver is on the push, and so therefore you have to lift your bass off. I'll show you what happens. Now, let's deal with the right hand first of all. We have B, C, same buttons, pull, push, and then the button below on the pull will give us D, then we come to the button above, play that C again. So it's pull, push, pull, push. The two bars are the same, so it sounds like this. Now the bass line is G bass, C chord, G bass, G chord. But when you play that final note of the bar, it's a C on the push. So you can't hang on to that G chord, so you've got to lift it. See, as you do that, you're pushing in, no bass. So make sure you lift that bass off. That's a, a technique we use a lot when we're playing the melodeon. Now here we have a couple of easy bars. Now we have B and C on the same button. Notice that the B is a dagger note from the previous bar, so you could leave your finger on. We've got B, C, same button, pull, push, pull. And then we keep pulling to get the A, so it's finger three, finger three, finger three, finger two, B, C, B, A, and it's G bass, C chord, G bass, G chord. Okay, and then in the next part you've got G, E, G, F. So that is push, 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 pull. Finger two, finger one, finger two, finger one. Remember we are in pause plus one at the moment. And that's C bass, C chord, C bass, G chord. Those two bars. And now you've done this bit before. So those four bars, 25 to 28, are the same as 17 to 20. Bar 29 will move back down one to pause plus two. Crotchet, crotchet, so D, E, pull, push, same button. Now notice what we do with the bass here. We don't do an um part, we play the bass note and the bass chord together. So it's both, both spoons down together, or both buttons down together if you're playing that type of melodeon. Pull, push, that gives you G chord with the G bass on the pull, C chord with the C bass on the push. To go with your pretty powerful sound. Now, here we go. We've done these notes before, but this, this time it's quaver, quaver, dotty, quaver, semi quaver, and a single G bass, G chord at the beginning. Together, see? You don't sustain the chord all the way through the bar. Just for the first part. And bar 31. So bar 31, you've got G, G, A, B. And then a final note of C, which is a minim, so it fills up the bar, bar 32. Little eruption there, it's quite nice. And what you do there, you do an um par, but you do it half time. Um par. So those four bars. Little, like I say, that little eruption on the end. Right, let's play that B part all the way through, shall we?
So there we are, that's uh, Ojo. The boat is going over, played on a one row melodeon in sea in a very lively kitchen. Hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thank you for watching and you'll see me in my next video.